Friday. Yes, boss. I'm here to help. Can you say, let's get this YouTube video started? Certainly. Let's get this YouTube video started. Would it be possible to have an AI assistant in your home or your workshop? Because years ago, that would have seemed impossible, but today, I think we're almost there. Granted, there are already assistants, like the Google Home Mini, that you can just mount to the wall. And you can talk to them, but they aren't actually AI, are they? And this one doesn't have a display either. Now, as you know, we do have ChatGPT, but it's a text-to-text -text AI. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we can talk to it instead? Ever since I saw the first Iron Man movie, I've been dreaming about having my own AI assistant like Jarvis. And today I'm gonna attempt to make just that. I'd like to open a new project file, index as Mark II. So what I've been thinking is to make a display that you can mount to the wall, kind of like a Google Home Mini, but with a display that shows you the information that you want. And to make this, you will need some hardware, and here's what I got. I have a Raspberry Pi, which is going to be the brains of the operation. A Raspberry Pi is basically a tiny computer, so you can attach a display, a mouse, and a keyboard to it, and do all kinds of stuff. And the good thing is that it isn't that expensive. This one was 99 bucks. And I have this display from Elecro called Crow Vision. This is a pre-production unit that I was able to get, but there's a Kickstarter coming around this. Any screen will do though, this is just a matter of convenience. The cool thing about this one is that on the back it has pre-built standoffs to attach the Raspberry Pi on the back of the display, along with their own control card for powering the Raspberry Pi and the display itself. It also comes with these momentary push buttons to control the LCD. And all of this will be encased in wood and placed on the wall in my workshop, or that's the plan at least. The first thing I did was I started to measure the device because I knew I had to make a 3D printed case to go on the back. Now this was just a matter of measuring and CAD modeling. If you want to check out the resources, I'll have everything linked down below. A really helpful tool when doing this kind of CAD modeling is to have one of these, a radius gauge. It tells you what radius was used on that particular project. In this case, 7 was the closest one. It's just a simple way of measuring the radius. This particular one was 3D printed, but you can certainly buy them as well. So I started making a design that could not only house the display, but also give me the possibility to add a wooden frame around it. So I made these standoffs with a hole, and the idea is to attach the wooden frame to that later. And I succeeded almost right away. My 3D printer isn't big enough to handle the entire casing in one print, so I divided the model in two and added these two tiny brackets to help me align and glue the two parts together. So when both the pieces were printed, I had to glue them together. The model was printed on the Bamboo Lab P1P, which has a print bed that gives the print really nice surface. So I opted to print the parts with the front facing down, which resulted in some supports being printed that can then be removed quite easily. I also 3D printed a small case for the push buttons for the display along with some small push buttons and assembled that into one piece. That piece will have to go into the wooden frame later on. But before I go any further, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that keeps your digital stuff safe. And you don't want anyone getting a hold of your digital stuff, do you? It's basically like a safeguard protecting your information, especially when you're using the internet in public. It encrypts all the information that's being sent from your device to the internet, thus preventing evil hackers getting a hold of it. I think the glue up was a success. But a VPN is more than that. Just the other day, I wanted to see a movie that my friend from the UK suggested I'd watch. Well, I couldn't because it wasn't available in Sweden. So I just opened up Surfshark and changed my location to the United Kingdom and then I could watch that show. Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, so you could connect to basically any country you want. So why not try it out for yourself? 
Surfshark is currently offering my audience an extra three months for free. And they also have a 30 day money back guarantee. And with one account, you can use it on an unlimited amount of devices. Go to surfshark.deals slash the Swedish maker to get an extra three months for free. And thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. All right, to be able to talk to the Raspberry Pi, I got this. A small four-way microphone that can pick up sounds from all over the room. Very similar to the other assistants out there. For audio I have this really inexpensive speaker that connects via USB to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry does work with Bluetooth speakers, so that might be a possible upgrade for the future. I assembled everything neatly and tucked away the cables as best I could. Shortening the cables is a better solution, but I didn't have time for that. Now this could already work as a functioning computer, but that's not what I'm building. To make the frame I had a small piece of walnut that I milled down to about 17mm thickness. After I had a flat surface from the planer I had it cut in half on the bandsaw and then I could put the pieces through the thicknesser. Then I went on to cut the pieces to width on the table saw to get a couple of pieces to make the frame. Then I had the pieces cut to length on the miter saw. I don't have the best experience with mitered corners, so I decided to do a rabbit joint instead. That was a simple task for the table saw. Set the height of the blade to half the thickness of your material. Add a sacrificial fence to the full width of your material and chop away. I don't have a dado blade, but running the pieces back and forth works just as good. Before I could glue up the frame I needed to make a hole for the button assembly and the only idea I had was to freehand with the router. So I did that and started a small fire that I eventually was able to put out. And that was after I had tried the old flat screwdriver as a fire distinguisher. I made sure the button assembly was a good fit and then I could glue the entire frame up. I bought these rather inexpensive band clamps that worked surprisingly good. To cover the speaker at the bottom, I made a small frame from offcuts off camera. Basically four pieces glued and screwed together. Then I covered that frame with a mesh that I bought. I just stapled that around the small frame and then I could glue that into place. To finish the wood, I used Rubio Monocoat Oil Plus to see pure. It's easy to apply and I think it gives the walnut a really nice lift. I screwed the display assembly in place with the holes in the 3D printed parts as I mentioned before. I assembled the button assembly and it has a cover on the back to stop the momentary buttons to fall out. And then I covered it on the outside with a small 3D printed frame as well. And the last thing I did was placing the speaker and connecting it and hanging it on the wall. Okay, so I've hung it on the wall behind me, but right now there's nothing on it. So the next part is installing the magic mirror and doing some programming. So I opted to go for a project called Magic Mirror. Most often this is used with a display and a one-way mirror in front, but I really don't want to see myself. I would rather see other stuff. And I would like to be able to interact with the display as well, since it is a touch screen. You can download the entire software onto a Raspberry Pi running Raspberry OS. To install the Magic Mirror you simply follow the guide on their website and it is quite straightforward even for someone without experience. Once installed you can run it and you'll see some modules showing weather, calendar and news. But I wanted to customize that a bit more. So I started installing modules that other people have made for the magic mirror. And I'll have all of them listed down below. So there is a big community around the magic mirror and lots of people have made custom modules and they can be downloaded and installed on your magic mirror. Then I talked to my friend Steve. 
well, we record a podcast together. But I asked him what type of modules he would want. He said a button to press every time you make a mistake. But there was no module like that to download, so I had to make it myself. Well, I didn't make it myself. I asked ChatGPT to build it for me. And then he also said a calculator would be good. So I made that as well. Working with ChatGPT is such a joy compared to the options. I can't remember how many times I've bumped into issues when programming and I've had to ask people on forums. Granted, they can be really helpful, but you have to wait for the answer. With ChatGPT, it works directly and really good. It's not like it went perfect the first try. No, you completely broke the module again. Oh man. Sometimes it struggles to remember what you've already agreed on and oftentimes it forgets previous code that was working. And then you have to go back and remind it. It is very courteous though. Steve also said it would be cool to have a drawing board. So I made that as well. Suffice to say, I did spend some time together with ChatGPT on this thing. And this is what it currently looks like. It has the modules I talked about, the calculator, the drawing board and the mistake counter. And they all work as they're supposed to. But I also installed a module called Google Assistant that lets you do all the voice commands you would normally do with your Google Home stuff. Jarvis. Turn the lights off in the workshop. Okay, turning two lights off. That's not the AI part, but part of this module is that you call it by saying Jarvis instead of, well, instead of Hey Google. And that is the name from the assistant in the first movies. And I can even run YouTube videos on this thing. Jarvis, set the volume to 10%. Jarvis. Spotify Play. Well, welcome to episode 105. Yeah, 105 of the Three Northern Makers podcast. Now there's still one thing missing and it's the main function, the AI assistant. And I've been spending two full days trying everything I can think of to get this to work. And honestly, it's totally doing my head in. But I have decided to give it a couple of more hours to see if I can get it to work. Otherwise, I might have to figure something else out. But for now, I'm gonna keep working on it to see if I can get it to work. You know what? I have a working AI assistant. But before I show you, there are some costs attached to this. The company OpenAI who has the ChatGPT has an API to use the ChatGPT, but the API costs a bit. It's not that much, but it's still a cost. And I'm also using a text-to-speech function from Amazon that has some costs attached to it. But here it is. Friday. Yes. Boss. I'm working on a YouTube video about creating an AI assistant like the one seen in the Iron Man movies. Could you give me three YouTube titles for the video that makes people really want to watch it? Certainly. Here are three intriguing YouTube video title suggestions that might pique people's interest in your video. 1. Unleashing the power. How to create your own Iron Man style AI assistant. Thanks. Not sure I'll use one of those titles, but you get the drift. And currently it's running behind the magic mirror, so it's not included in the UI for now. Now, if you have any ideas on how to make this better, or if you want to work on making it better, I have all the code uploaded to my GitHub. And if you want to make your own, I have all the things I've used listed down below. Friday. Can you tell my YouTube audience thanks for watching? Absolutely. Hey there, fellow viewers. On behalf of your name slash channel name, I wanted to extend a heartfelt thank you for watching our content. We appreciate your time, support, and interest in what we do. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.